And you know, I don't know how many true love situations ever came from the prison fishing. I got to imagine at least a few did, right? True love. Like, how did you guys meet? Wow. <laughs> Do you want to tell them? Do you want to tell them? I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell So I was in jail for carjacking. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the conference. I feel like I'm going golfing today. Well, today's a good day. It's... What the hell is today? Well, today's a good day. It's Tuesday as I film this, and this morning, my flip house just went live, listed for sale. And I'm already seeing a whole bunch of other houses that I'm interested in for potentially flip house number three. But that's over on Joe Does Stuff. This is after prison show, for God's sakes. Joe, get with the program. Today, I want to share with you guys Something that I had mentioned in a previous video, and that is fishing in prison. Something that prisoners used to do. They don't do it very much anymore, at least nowhere around here in the state of Virginia because of the changes that they've made to the phone systems. Maybe in other states they're still able to do this. Maybe this is still something that takes place elsewhere. But in relation to fishing in prison, I'm not talking about with a rod or a reel, and I'm definitely not talking about with a string and a kite being slid up underneath of your cell door or bars. What I'm referring to is something that used to take place on the prison telephone, making collect calls to random people hoping to be able to get in contact with those random people and to try to potentially gain support or at the very least just a 15 minute conversation. There is so much that would go into this type of fishing in prison. I'm going to try to break it all down for you guys here today and make it the most enjoyable, entertaining video that I possibly can. So it's with mentioning all of that that what do you say we go ahead and we die? I just found these new big and tall button up polos. They're not very expensive. They're like $20 a piece from JCPenney's or Macy's. And uh, the sleeves are just super tight, super tight. But they're nice though. Bah! Little Macy's ad for you guys right there. Head first up into this video. And I know, I'm actually not looking too shabby in this. Looking like I might be losing a little bit of weight. I can guarantee I'm probably, I probably am actually. I've been working quite a bit. Not working out, but working. The first thing that I want to mention in relation to fishing in prison is that there are certain rules and politics that go into this. You know, as a fisherman of sorts of the telephone and the collect calls, you have got to play by the politics of the institution or the housing unit that you're in. You could be easily looked at in a less favorable light for a number of reasons if you don't play by the rules. And some of those things include you know, finding the most opportune and perfect time to attempt to cast your proverbial rod and reel. Meaning a time when the telephones are not tied up. Maybe bright and early. Maybe at lunchtime. Maybe when a certain popular TV show is on. The crazy thing about it is, in most cases, all the time, the phones in a jail or prison are going to be tied up unless you get lucky enough to be in a housing unit where nobody's really got any type of outside support, i.e. money on the phone, money on their books, money coming in, no commissary going out. Oh, it sounded like a little song we were putting together right there. You definitely want to find an opportune time because it's not going to take, you know, the majority of the housing unit to figure out what's going on over there once they start seeing you going over to that phone and just punching in a whole bunch of random numbers. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to call my grandma. I forgot a number. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Go back to watching the days of our lives. Nosy people up in here. If you're tying up that phone, fishing, when other prisoners need, want, or have the opportunity to actually call people that they know, it could lead to some problems for you and, you know, they either beat you up or get you up out of there. Guard, hey, get him up out of here. This dude trying to pull off the car's extended warranty long before that was ever a thing. <laughs> Hello. Would you like to talk about your car's extended warranty today? You wouldn't, but wait. Another little politic and little thing that you got to keep in mind if you're doing the fishing is... You know, you better have a damn good reason as to why you're doing the fishing. It's probably going to be some sort of a sob story, too. Hey, you uncovered me, okay? 
Yes, I am over here just punching in random numbers trying to find somebody. Don't you know how lonely it is in here? And if I find somebody, I might find somebody for you too. I know you're lonely like me. We can hug it out. We can do that. It's not weird. It's jail. You want to do it in the shower? I mean, uh. <laughs> oh yeah, we're going in. We're going in decent. You know, back in the day, this used to be a super popular thing to do. And I, I saw guys who would do this succeed doing this. And you know, there were different levels to the amount of dedication a, a prisoner would put into the fishing. Such as some guys might have notebooks full of potential numbers to try to call. Not just running up to that phone, punching in random numbers. Dudes are gonna have notebooks with more numbers on the page than in the matrix. But as time would progress, changes would be made to the phone system. Maybe the prisons got hip and weren't feeling the fact that prisoners were doing this phishing tactic. So then you started having to have numbers on a call list. You could have up to 10 numbers on your call list and those were the only numbers that you could call. Those numbers also had to be accepted by the outside party. You know, the prison would have an automated call that would call, hello, we're calling you from such and such county jail where Lil Dookie Stain is trying to reach you. If you're okay with him trying to contact you, I don't know why you would, a guy by the name of Lil Dookie Stain, Press one. But if you would never like to hear from Little Dookie Stain again, and you would like this number blocked forever, press four. That, in turn, destroyed the fishing industry. But in its heyday, when you could just run up to that phone and punch in numbers like it was an Uzi, not only were prisoners able to do that, they were also, in some cases, able to record a custom message for every single phone call. You didn't have to just use one. And in cases when you had to use just one, you better have the best all around pre-recorded message for who is calling to give you the best chances for success if that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna cast your nets out there to try to catch you some pin pal fish. Hello, you have a collect call from... <laughs> Oh, you know who this is. Or maybe something like, hello, you have a collect call from <laughs> Who was that calling me? Who is that? I don't know. I'm gonna have to press one to hear who this is. Beep. Hey, yo, I'm so glad that you picked up the phone. Oh my God, wait, don't hang up. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. Just give me one minute. And I'm gonna tell you why. You need to spend these next 14 minutes on the phone hearing my pleas for help, girl. Oh, you're 80? What you doing right now? You watching The Price is Right? Me too. Hello, you have a collect call from <laughs> your future BD. And for those of you who don't know, that's your baby daddy. You have a collect call from Help me, please, just press one. I really need to talk to you. The sky was the limit in terms of what you could use for that pre-recorded phone call. Hello, you have a collect call from, hello. Have you heard about your car's extended warranty? Press one for yes. I'm actually thinking that that might in fact be where that actually came from. Probably not. Another little politic that you had to be really careful with is you could, like, you know, when prisoners knew that you were over there fishing, and I didn't do this, okay, because I didn't, my talk game back in the day wasn't really that strong. Even at 18 years old, and even though I was a little pistol starter and do rag tied super tight up in the jail, I sort of got used to that pretty quickly, which is a horrible thing to do. If you can get into jail at 18 years old, never being locked up before, and adapt, like, if you adapt quickly, that's not a good sign at all. That could be a sign that this is gonna be a common occurrence for you moving forward in your life. And in mine, it was all the damn times that I got locked up. But even with that, like the irony was that I couldn't get on that phone and just dial a bunch of random numbers. What would I say? What if they did pick up? Yeah, I, I couldn't do it, but I saw plenty of dudes doing it and they got a kick out of hearing the success stories. Yo, boy, hey, I just struck. I hit this random number and yo, Nancy Grace picked up the phone, this, this grandmama, yeah. I told her I was trying to make her my sugar grandmama, but no disrespect, I ain't trying to take advantage of that, I'm just trying to have some phone time. 
I'm just trying to have some phone time. You know she out there lonely, watching the prices way all by herself. Her kids ain't calling you. Oh, that's your grandmama. I feel like I got a little off track with that, so let me circle back and say that, you know, you had to be careful. Another little politic to this was you couldn't come across as like some dude just trying to take advantage of people, even though, no matter how a dude spun it, yo, I'm out here trying to save lives. People are bored at home. If they're gonna press one, there's a reason why they're gonna press one. And damn it, I'm gonna give them 15 minutes of entertainment. I'm gonna brighten up their day in 15 minutes. Maybe, just maybe, they'll let me call back. No matter what the justification was, the ramification was always, Hey, yo, did you say that? I knew you would. I knew you would. Yeah. You know, and I'm not going to sit here and say that every prisoner who did the fishing was ultimately out for themselves just to get that money order sent in. I'm not going to say that. But you got to believe that a lot of them were. And think about the guy. Who succeeds? He gets through. That random number presses one. Hello? Oh, thank God that you answered. Hey, yo, is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is Tina there? She's not. No, no, no. That's not my girlfriend or my wife. No, uh, that's my daughter. My, 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 my baby's mother, she died in a horrific plane accident. You had two Boeing 747s head-on collision. I saw it in a dream of mine. God, I wish she yeah, my daughter, I haven't spoken to her in a long time. And what's your name? Margarine. Ooh, my God, that sounds butterly delicious. I can't believe it's not butter. Oh, that made you laugh? I knew it would. Margarine, you are such a sweet woman. How old are you? 94. You don't sound a day over 90, Margarine. Margarine, do you have a bank account? You do. Could you imagine a prisoner's delight when not only that person accepted the call, but they also sent that? They got to be feeling like, they got to be feeling like, they got to be feeling like Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street. Margarine, sell me this pen. And you know, I don't know how many true love situations ever came from the prison fishing. I got to imagine at least a few did, right? True love? Like, how did you guys meet? Well, <laughs> do you want to tell them? Do you want to tell them? I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell. So I was in jail for carjacking. <laughs> Doesn't that carry a life sentence? Like I had mentioned at the beginning and also throughout this video, they've made changes to the phone system to prevent prisoners from being able to fish. But you gotta know that where there's a will, there's a way. And even if you can't just go up to the phone and punch in a bunch of random numbers, there are other ways that prisoners will try to cast those lines out there. Maybe through a three-way. Can you imagine calling your sister, mother, brother, father, anybody who picks up the phone and is like, yo, can you just call anybody? Just punch in a bunch of random numbers for me. But if you're able to call somebody to get a three-way, you probably don't got to go about it just like that. There was also Craigslist, and Craigslist has made changes. They used to have, they used to have the, they had a section up there that was really good for it. Casual encounters or something like that. I think it was something like that. And matter of fact, that was how I did prison fishing. I didn't do the phone tactic, but I put a good little ad on Craigslist and that's how I met prison pen pals. But again, they've made changes to Craigslist and now they don't have as many of those sections anymore. And it's interesting because sometimes I'll go on Craigslist and look to see if I see personal ads from people locked up and I don't really see them so much. Actually, I don't see them at all. And then you've got prisoner pen pal websites which I feel like is really the only thing left for a prisoner, aside from asking your celly or your, your, your buddy in prison if, he's got a, if his girl's got a friend. But it's crazy to think that back in the day, there were a lot of different ways that prisoners could... That was a horrible fishing sound effect right there. There were a lot of different ways back in the day that prisoners could have cast those rod and reels out there into the water and see what nibbles and possibly bites. And nowadays, it doesn't seem like there is as much. I know they've got email in the prisons now. Maybe you could just put in a bunch of random emails and try to fish like that. But just like the phones, I think you have to have those email addresses accepted prior to any type of correspondence. If you know of any other ways that prisoners are fishing for potential pen pals or love connections, please comment down below and let me know. 
I know that a lot of prisoners have access to cell phones now, so the possibilities are endless if you got your hands. I mean, you got a you got an American Express black card right there. There's no limit on the amount of potential that you got for pretty much everything with a cell phone. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up now. And if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about this. And as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace.